Um, welcome to um, this DCMI virtual section on best practice number one. We have a wonderful four speakers and they will present followed by around five minutes um, for questions and answers. And during the presentation, uh, you can um, pose questions in the chat uh, window or chat channel anonymously if you wish, or with your real name. And you can also uh, see the questions uh, posed by other uh, attendees and you can vote for the, your favorite question. And um, having said that, I'd like to uh, um, present our wonderful speakers and I create a uh, slide um, just helping you to understand our wonderful speakers um, today. Um, so, like I mentioned that, uh, we have four wonderful speakers today, and uh, speakers will be um, these other um, speakers, um, Yun Gyeong Choi and Swani, Miss Swani, I'm sorry if I pronounce your this incorrectly, please um, forgive me, um, uh, Mr. Humphrey and Dr. Joseph, and also we have a last, not the list, um, Farahar and Muhammad and uh, Norajian. So we have a wonderful speakers and we are um, going to explore you know, some of the um, best practice in the real field. And roughly we're gonna spend about 10 minutes for the presentation and five minutes on Q&A. And uh, our first speaker is Dr. Ying Gyeong Choi. She is a librarian at the National Library of Korea, and she is specializing in developing and maintaining library metadata standard and metadata services. And her um, presentation title is Implementation and Challenge to Improve Metadata Workflow in National Library of Korea. So Dr. Yoon, whenever you're ready, um, we are ready. I think hope you're ready too. So here we comes, Dr. Uh, Choi. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Good uh, afternoon or good morning and good evening. Yes, my name is Yoon Gyeong Choi. Can I uh, start my presentation now? Yes, please. And you can share your screen to yes. yes. My presentation. Yes. Yeah, we can see that. Okay. I think we are ready. Yes. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Yoon Gyeong Choi. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present at DCMI 2021 Best Practice. Uh, our library, uh, NLK, as a national library, uh, prepares and services national bibliography. We generate and create metadata, um, yes, more than half a million metadata each year. Uh, recently, we emerging technologies such as machine learning and artificial intelligence and good quality data outside the library. We are struggling to efficiently and accurately manage a huge amount of metadata. So today presentation, I'm going to introduce two examples that NLK has attempted to manage metadata innovatively. Yes, uh, the order is as follows. Uh, as you know, a library cataloging combines simple and intelligent work. The catalog process includes subject analysis and resource description and creating and linking access points and relationships. Uh, our library still follows the traditional cataloging process. Most of the work is done manually. More than 80 employees, including librarians and assistants, directly input data. Also, uh, our sourcing is also carried uh, with annual cost of more than 3 billion won is a similar 2.5 million US dollar. 
in particular, assigning classification number and subject terms takes the most time. However, uh, despite these efforts, the results of subject analysis can vary from person to person so that the date data becomes less consistency and accuracy. Also, since our staff change department or divisions uh, every three years, so these problems become more seriously. Okay, uh, these two images are metadata samples of uh, by National Library of Korea. Left side is uh, offline material metadata uh, according to COMAC. Um, COMAC means Korean uh, mark, it's similar to Mark 21. And the right side is the uh, online material metadata according to MODS rules we uh, developed by Library of Congress. So we are assigning classification number and subject headings uh, for online and offline resources metadata. So uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, to solve the problem of subject analysis, uh, NLK tried to make a pilot service that automatically recommends subject terms based on NLSH. NLSH means uh, our library's subject headings, such as uh, uh, like SSH. After this uh, project, this service has not been applied to real work, but I want to uh, introduce this project. Uh, this service was developed for librarians or catalogers, not users. Uh, that is the purpose of this project is to assist librarians in assigning subject headings to bibliographic data. The project team uh, applied machine learning to develop this service and also as learning and training data, uh, they, use, they used the table of contents and reviews of over 58 provided by online bookstore. Oh, yes. Uh, the online bookstore is a Kyobo. It's Kyobo is the like mm, in Korea bookstore, Amazon. Yes. The uh, most famous bookstore in online offline. offline. So uh, also an automatic classification algorithm called attention mesh. I don't know the uh, algorithm exactly, but uh, they use this algorithm. Uh, this is the screenshot of automatic recommendation pilot service. Yes, when a, a, a cataloger uh, searches for information on a specific material use ISBN, yes, ISBN. Uh, the table of contents and reviews by the online bookstores are displayed on the left screen. Librarians can check the uh, table of contents and review data. And then uh, librarian click uh, run. This well, uh, yes, this is run. Run, so uh, they can check the result. Uh, this this is the uh, this is the subject list based on reviews, and this list is based on table of content. And this this score means the accuracy uh, rate of uh, automatic recommendation. So that, uh, yes, uh, also, although online bookstore data was used or our subject heading was recommended because keywords 
using the bookstore data were manually mapped with the subject headings. So this is the data by online bookstore. Uh, uh, using this data, the algorithm recommend the subject heading list automatically uh, about three uh, terms. As a result of this project, there are some findings. Uh, the recommendation accuracy of uh, accuracy was higher than using the table of contents rather than reviews. This means TOC, the table of content, better represent uh, better present the subject of the materials. In addition, the more frequently uh, mentioned or assigned subject terms uh, in the table of contents, uh, the more accurate uh, accurate auto um, recommend results. But uh, there are some limitation of this project. The latest or new terms, like trendy, uh, trendy terms like COVID-19 have to be mentioned a few times. So in this case, it is difficult to apply automatic recommendation because of lack of accuracy. In this respect, this project leaves a lot of challenges in the future. There is no plan yet, but in follow-up project, it is necessary to use the history of subject headings assigned by the librarians as training data and compare it with the result by the machine to improve accuracy and algorithm. Also, it is necessary to study improvements to increase the accuracy even for subject terms that are used less for new terms. Uh, this project was carried by another um, department, so uh, it is difficult for me to give a specific uh, description. So if you have any questions or recommendation of, about this project, please uh, contact me. I will connect you with the person in charge. Second uh, project is uh, automatically conversion uh, for uh, metadata of journal articles using external data. Each year, 5,000 data, data are manually entered by one employee in NLK. The work itself is very, very outdated. Our staff copies the table of content every day, uh, is, uh, print out, and enters title, author, affiliated institution, and keywords and journal title according to the Coma format, like this. This project started from the worry that such a work was too inefficient and even the amount of data created was very low, so the value of use decreases for data. The purpose of this project is to automatically convert externally created data into our library data format. Uh, we use KCI data. KCI data is a kind of journal database managed by uh, the National Research Foundation of Korea. It is called uh, NRF. NRF is supporting funds for publication to domestic academic societies and manages metadata and full text of the journals published. So NLK's collection department uh, is receiving the journal information from NRF every month in Excel format in order to collect the Korean journals. Uh, 
for automatic conversion, the project proceeded in three steps. First, we analyze the elements and content rules of the KCI data because KCI data is not a KCI is not a library. So, uh, and also we defined mutual mapping uh, mapping rules between KCI and Kumak data. Next, we designed functions and menus and the uh, display screen to implement in the system such as importing and modifying data and linking KCI volumes and issue information and our data. And final step is we developed a system and tested the function and evaluated conversion accuracy for about two months. How many times is left? Okay. Our, we have a um, maximum flexibility. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, everyone has uh, enough time. We only have four speakers. So, yeah, Dr. Choi, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes. As a result of examining accuracy, uh, 18 of the six, uh, 26 elements of coma converted very well. Elements that can be converted relatively well are proper title, author and affiliation and journal information, language and page and etc. But it is difficult to convert a bit, uh, eight elements into data uh, because there is no data in KCI uh, because, for example, parallel, parallel title and extent. However, most of the elements uh, uh, with lower accuracy was not essential, but for identification or of resources. Uh, therefore, there was little problem in ident identifying and searching articles without data correction or additional descriptions. So we uh, plan to automatically convert and build uh, our um, article metadata from next year. So, yes, it's the last slide. Yeah, um, institutions uh, that create and share metadata such as our library, uh, inevitably need to consider uh, consider data accuracy and um, the effectiveness and we have to decide the pri priorities. Uh, I think there is no such a thing as the best decision. So we only make decisions for the better now. Of course, automation does not necessarily mean sacrificing accuracy. Therefore, we are making various efforts and considerations so that these two values can coexist as much as possible using um, new technology and resources, uh, external data. So in this regard, our library will make various attempts uh, to assist librarians move away from labor and transform our work to be more productive and innovative uh, while improving the quality of data. Okay, thank you for listening. Is, is 10 minutes? Um, actually, a little more, but that's fine. Uh, we have enough time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Choi. I really appreciate that. Uh, oh, by the way, thank you, Dr. Choi. Uh, give a pause for the wonderful um, presentation. Thank you so much. And we do have a second speaker, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Swani Koi Hong Tong. I did my best to pronounce your last name, and please forgive me if I made a mistake. And she is a a uh, lecturer uh, at the Department of Information Science, Department of Humanity and Social Science at Konkan University. And um, her title is a metadata requirement 
development for middle meeting. Uh, Ms. Wani, whenever you're ready, please share your screen and we are ready to uh, learn from you. Do you see the share screen function at the bottom of the June? Okay. Can I show my presentation? Yes, yes, whenever you're ready. Uh, you, you see my presentation? Not yet. Um, you have to initiate the uh, share screen from your end. Yeah, it's coming. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning. I'm Swan Hee Huy Hong Kong. I'm lecturer and PhD student at Information Science Department, Faculty of Humanity and Social Science, Konkan University. Uh, today, I would like to give a presentation on metadata requirement developed for moral painting. This is my thesis topic when I study in a master degree. Um, my presentation is the five parts. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the background of this study. Uh, more painting is a culture. This is an ancient Thai art and is evident of historical significance. The more of reflect the folklore, religious belief, culture, tradition, and historical event. Um, but with the long process of time, many murals are in the poor condition, and in some places they are invisible. Because of this, there is an issue of cultural heritage, information management, and digital humanity is a research issue emergence from integrated between computer science and humanity. So, but access and use of the digital content, there is the need to develop metadata to describe the content, context, and structure of information resource. So I consider it is important to study moral because uh, there are no study about development of the described to moral in Thailand and that's important culture of Thailand. Then in the second part, I would like to move on to my objective. There are three objectives. The firstly, uh, to study and analysis physical characteristic and content knowledge in moral. The second to study the need to search and access data moral of user. Finally, to develop metadata requirement for the moral. Now I will focus on the theoretical concept. The first is metadata life cycle. The metadata life cycle can be divided into the four groups. First scope of my study is to develop a metadata requirement. So I apply development steps in the group one and group two only. And next I will talk about the feature of information. Feature of information are the description of information resource divided into the three parts in content, context and structure. And next, I will talk about the preparation of metadata requirement. I determine the methods of developing metadata using the adjustment method from the VRA core. I use the result of the metadata element from the study of the information feature and the element from the study of the information behavior. The next step is to compare in the table format. Find the elements that are consistent with the needs of user and group the element at the meaning of the same metadata element. And to reduce the duplication of those metadata elements and add new elements to this cover. This step use the concept of application profile. Next part is the methodology. I will explain the objective of the research. 
First, to study of information feature of moral has the three steps. For one outcome is a data set feature of information. Step one is the document analysis. Source of information are the book, textbook, and research paper related to moral. Two of these is document analysis form. Step two is content analysis. Source of information are moral painting in the 19th temple in the northeastern of Thailand. Two of these is content analysis form. And next step is interview with the 19th airport and the officer of fire art department. Uh, two of these is a semi-structure interview. And next objective to study the information behavior. The source of information have a two group. The first is the worker in organization handled handle with the moral, such as the officer of fire department and research, researcher or the higher education student. The two, two is the semi-structure interview. An outcome is a primary data about user requirements of digital collection of moral. The last objective is to prepare the metadata requirements specification. I will bring a data set feature of information and primary data about user requirement to analysis as metadata property and primary metadata scheme. The final result of the study will be document requirement of metadata. Finally, I will go and talk about the results. Uh, the first objective, my result about feature of information, uh, the moral content includes the content group, the name of the moral, uh, the era of moral, the painter, uh, inscription in the moral. The contextual feature of information of moral have the four elements. Uh, number one is the moral registration. Moral restoration, the owner of the moral, the location of the moral, and the physical structure of the moral has six men. Number one is the art for moral, and next is the style, style period of the moral. Structure of moral, type of moral, the location of the moral, and last one is the pending sequence. Uh, result according to objective number two, the study found that the government agency made possible for pending data. There are 17 elements. Uh, let's use the en entry in the moral pending database system. Why a study of the needs of information provider about information item? That's a useful for searching and ac accessing moral. The result of the study found that the data suggested by the user were six elements. That aspect in accessing design con content and the physical moral. User require reasonable access point. Uh, number one is the registration number of painting, uh, the name of the te temple, the content group, the area of the mural, technique for creating the mural, and uh, number six is the abstract and description of the mural. The result from this study were integrated. Uh, integrated, compare, and essential point of characteristic of models, user needs, and the collection management while expecting the significant attribute of the metadata element set. And the developed metadata was compared with the element of existing metadata scheme for finding the common spec specified attribute of moral metadata. And the metadata elements were extracted using application profile by matching the VRA core standard element set and element from information feature of the moral with the user metadata requirement, the significant attribute, and the definition are the list two in the table. 
And next step, I bring all elements from the study and compare and analysis from matching elements to prove the elements that are duplicate and analyze the elements that need to be created. Elements from VIA core standard were not used in the user query because some of them could not describe in the context of Moro in Thailand. And summarizing the elements that are necessary for use of, of Moro, there are 19 elements. There are 13 elements that can be adapted from VRA core standard. And there is a need to create six elements that cannot be referenced from the main standard. The next step is uh, the definition of metadata element. The structure of the metadata does it create divided level of data units that are made into two levels, the main level and the sub level. All elements I have uh, defined the definition based on the VRA core standard for the benefits of storing, accessing, publishing, and exchanging results effectively. The metadata element for the moral content, the name of the element and the display as shown following in the table. Um, in order to save time, I would like to inform you that you can see the uh, my sample of the information. I made at the Digital Humanity Research Group website. Um, thank you all for your attention. Great. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ms. Swani is a PhD student um, that continue her master work, master's um, subject. And I'm pretty sure all the uh, input from the floor, I'm pretty sure it will be um, help for study on this subject. And uh, thank you again for the wonderful presentation. And we look forward to um, hearing your um, study on this subject uh, in, a, uh, in, in the near future. Thank you again, uh, Ms. Swani, for the wonderful project, I mean, wonderful presentation. And thank you for all the questions from the floor. Now we are going to move to um, our last speaker, not the list. Um, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we um, have a little bit of a miscommunication and we don't have the third speaker, um, which is um, uh, Dr. I mean, Ms. Humphrey and Dr. Joseph. Uh, so we are going to, and the third speaker will be, uh, they're going to reschedule and they will present in a different section. So don't be, uh, you know, disappointed and you'll um, meet them in other time. So uh, having said that, we are going to uh, our uh, wonderful um, three speakers and uh, I will do my best to uh, pronounce your name. Uh, please forgive me. Um, maybe I just call your middle name, first name to make life easier. Um, Dr. Diana uh, Muhammad and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Amran. And uh, Diana is a faculty of information management um, at the University of Technology in Mara. And uh, Mr. Muhammad is a senior information technology officer <clears throat> at the National Archive of Malaysia. And uh, uh, Professor Amran, he, he, she is also faculty of information management at the University of Technology in Mara. And their um, presentation titled, metadata use in a web archiving initiative in Malaysia. Um, so when you are ready, it's all yours and you can share your screen and uh, we are ready to, um, yeah, for your presentation. Hi, thank you very much, Dr. Joseph. Uh, I will uh, share my slide for some time. Everyone hear my voice, right? Yes, we can hear a voice. Okay. We are waiting for your shared <laughs> screen. Thank you.
Yeah, we can see and we can hear. So I think we're ready. Okay. So I definitely I also be, still become the last presenter for this session. Yeah. Best practices presentation session one. Um, our title, uh, Metarata Use in Web Archiving Initiative in Malaysia. Before I proceed further, uh, it would be an honor if I can uh, introduce myself. I'm Farah Diana and Raizan Amran from uh, Faculty of Information Management, University of Teknologi Mara Puncak Perdana. And we are collaborating with uh, Mr. Muhammad Izwan Ramli from National Archive of Malaysia. Uh, within 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I guess I will share not limit to this. Uh, web Archiving Overview, Web Archiving Metadata and Government Initiative, Web Archiving Group by Information Science Researcher, Web Metadata in Information Science Education, and also some uh, challenges in uh, Web Archiving Implementation. Web Archiving Initiative in Malaysia progressively taken into serious action from Malaysia government bodies, uh, libraries and information services institutions, and also university researchers. With the massive spread of internet, preserving the web content are now being given important at the, as the websites um, contain various important uh, legal, political, and educational facts. As well as we all know, the World Wide Web may face um, many challenges uh, such as URL decay, web server crash or unavailable, or even web content inconsistency and loss due to the overlappings. So by making web archiving as a regular activity, we can preserve national and cultural heritage value or even capturing institution, corporate and social memories. All the content become priceless in the future and may be important for the, for the certain process, probably as a legal evidence um, for the business data analysis uh, and also as part of a significant historical value. Web archiving is also important to companies to secure the intellectual properties and capture their recognition broadcast in the web spheres by the third party. So this is some um, why web archiving is crucial. After this, I will continue presenting on the three section, uh, which is uh, web archiving initiative on, on the effort of national government bodies, uh, metadata in information science education, and also uh, web archiving and metadata wrote by the information uh, science researcher. Uh, the first projects. Uh, by the um, government, uh, Malaysia government. Uh, this is uh, uh, my government web archive. Uh, this is um, under the uh, the purpose of the uh, project. Uh, my GWA is to archive Malaysia government website content. Uh, is under uh, the National Archive Act 2003 and Act 629, which is um, all uh, national records need to be assessed, accessible. So until the Act, uh, that is part of responsible of the uh, Malaysian National Archive uh, to uh, make it accessible, uh, whatever format or media uh, related to the uh, government. Malaysia. Okay. Uh, uh, then um, throughout this actually um, until this case, my GWA uh, already can give an option uh, from the web portal, uh, either uh, user or public user uh, want to view the metadata first before displaying the web archive or the vice versa. Several metadata elements are set automatically, captured from crawl and source description. Uh, whereas uh, another um, metadata uh, needs to be keyed in and verified by the web archivist. We go to the uh, historical timeline. Uh, 
for uh, my GWA. It started on 2017 uh, in the, for the phase of one, two, four. Uh, actually, uh, it start with um, collaborating with the with the um, what we call uh, vendor or external parties uh, to gather the requirement, uh, start on the system design and specification, system development and anti phase port, which is uh, pilot testing. In 2018, uh, my GWA started uh, launching and implementation the web archiving uh, process. Uh, throughout this, after throughout this uh, stage also, uh, the my GWA uh, already been um, maintained by the Malaysia National Archive itself. Yeah. Then uh, they start on the two thousand twenty my GWA system enhancement uh, or maintenance. The internal team already take a look at the. Uh, how they want to enhance in terms of web archiving uh, portal features and also in terms of metadata updates. Okay, this is the detail uh, on my GWA flow process. Start from website URL selection, setting on requirement elements such as right and authorization, harvest date and time, title, topic, keyword, and brief abstract. Uh, need to be authorized, then only the crawler will take place and harvesting being uh, run. Uh, after that, they need to go for the two stages, uh, quality control. Yeah, uh, to check whether the metadata values insertion uh, okay or not, or accordingly. After verification takes place, then only the work file will be generated and accessible through my GWA portal. Okay, here are some details on descriptive metadata resided on the my GWA, which total of um, 20 metadata elements actually. Yeah. So here um, um, elements such as uh, keywords and descriptive. Uh, uh, it's being categorized into two because uh, just to cater in terms of um, uh, two language uh, that is uh, uh, prominent or uh, widely understandable by the Malaysian citizen. Yeah? So keywords in English and also keyword in Malaysia. So the same goes to the description uh, metadata, description element. Yeah? It, uh, it, it's comprised of two uh, fields. This is another project that run by the government bodies, yeah, uh, which called Sarawak State Archive SSWA. So this uh, Sarawak State um, is actually start on 2009, uh, but uh, it's actually um, initiated by the um, Sarawak State Library, or known as Pustaka. It also under uh, the SSWA was aimed to collect and keep Sarawakiana, which was Sarawak non-library resources as part of the legal deposit requirement of Sarawak State Library Ordinance 1999. Uh, then um, during the first stage of user requirement, metadata also um, uh, already been taken into consideration, such as their date of creation, date last access, uh, carrier soft, software, and also browser platform. Yeah. Um, then uh, in 2009, uh, initially, uh, during the first stage, 2009 to 2010, um, SSWA using HashiTrack tool that create non work file and the archive content only accessible by uh, log status or log view or log report. But since 2011, 2016, uh, SSWA already used a web curator tool and the archive description was stored in a dubbing core metadata, which is embedded in the tools. 
Uh, starting in 2017, SWA already used a uh, net archive suit 5, which encompasses uh, built-in web archive metadata for rapid web archive collection. The SSWA development of web archive system is currently developed by a government-owned IT company. Uh, mean it's been handed over from the state library into the uh, uh, specified uh, state own company. Uh, they call it as a science, eh? Sarawak Information System. So I guess that is only uh, two uh, big web archive initiatives that come from the uh, Malaysia government bodies. Now we take a look at the um, web archive, uh, archive Malaysia initiative from the perspective of researcher in the university. Uh, and uh, mainly from information science researchers. If we take a look, um, uh, the race also uh, already uh, since uh, 2014, we al already have uh, some researchers that uh, wrote about the web archiving. Uh, um, but uh, of course, uh, there's a limited number of publication. However, um, this is not are not limited to the uh, this number. It's just that that um, we are looking at the uh, faculty members, eh? what archiving related articles that wrote by academic members of faculty information management university technology Mara, which is our colleague. Eh? Um, another initiative um, that fall under. Uh, university, uh, this is our actually ongoing projects uh, in order to try to develop the database uh, structure or database design for web archive repository. Yeah? Uh, this is the initial database design that propose uh, a table structure have undergo a database initial study and database design guideline for the relational database. Yeah? We call it uh, M figures archive repository, which aim to store cultural value of nation figures, web archive content, yeah, cultural value and also um, uh, cultural and uh, uh, yeah, cultural value, uh, um, whatever content, web content that uh, come or that uh, come from social media, that come from the website, that talk about the Malaysian figures, uh, such as um, singer or politicians, um, our, our, um, our prime minister, for example. So we want to store all the, uh, the, the, the good vibe uh, from the web content. Yeah? Uh, so there is uh, M figure web archive repository. Okay, uh, researcher believe that designing web archive repository using ER diagram can reveal the granularity of data, which able to produce more data elements in the in the future. Uh, here also actually uh, uh, we the proposed uh, database design just now we try to um, embed the metadata element that uh, according to the uh, web archiving metadata standard such as WCO and also uh, OCLC metadata. So uh, most of it uh, align with the, these two metadata. Yeah? Um, now we proceed to the um, Web Archiving Initiative or Metadata Initiative uh, in Information Science Education. Okay, uh, this is just overview. Uh, I took this um, chart uh, just to reveal that um, uh, whatever uh, subjects or field that important and need to still need to uh, bring forward. Uh, uh, in the future uh, related to the um, program or courses offered by information science uh, faculty. 
such as this one um I quote oh, uh, took from the Ortiz Repriso, Greenberg and Calzado Prado, 2018. It shows that uh, distribution of cross clusters for digital creation in a tree map chart in which the area and color of each cluster are proportional to its frequency of occurrence. Digital creation and digital preservation are offered across all nine degree in this area. Database, uh, databases, digital culture and knowledge management are offered in five um, in all program that they all uh, take a look. Uh, so here I want to highlight that uh, metadata, uh, databases, digital, uh, digital culture, uh, SML, this is the um, element or courses that need uh, subject that need to be put in the uh, courses, uh, especially for our, uh, actually we are also in the middle of um, curriculum review for our bachelor degree program. So previously, uh, if uh, for your all information, um, we have four bachelor degree program. Uh, we are in the same field. Yeah? Uh, our bachelor degree stem is Bachelor of Information Science, uh, honored library management and the second one is bachelor information science honored information system management so we have a uh, division for the uh, bachelor of our uh, bachelor of information science so among these uh, four bachelor degree of information science uh, we uh, previously we Encapsulate or existing curriculum is encapsulate um, these numbers of uh, metadata uh, topics, uh, topics in the uh, subject or courses. Uh, then um, uh, uh, now uh, we are in the revision curriculum revision uh, task. Uh, we already take a look the crucials or the importance of. Uh, metadata element that need to be included in more either courses or become wider topic in the courses. Yeah, so uh, we extend um, actually one of we created one courses, one new courses, uh, introduction to metadata uh, uh, in this uh, program library management. Yeah. But it become a uh, uh, um, university core program that need to be take from this uh, need to be take by the uh, student from these four programs. Yeah. Uh, so other than that, uh, we include um, uh, more courses, uh, more topic. Uh, sorry, more courses on the database itself. Uh, enhancement of the web application topics uh, includes um, about metadata and also we um, enhance the existing uh, existing courses here uh, with uh, such this one uh, web archiving digital asset and digital research uh, also we enhance the syllabus uh, taking into um, more serious on the metadata um, modeling and also metadata management. Okay. Uh, some other activity uh, or tasks that we embed in our existing curriculum. Uh, this is from uh, web archiving uh, courses, uh, web archiving course. Uh, we already um, try to uh, introduce or try to expose students with the uh, 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 typology of uh, metadata actually. Okay. As we all also use um, uh, web academy life cycles and one stage or one step in the web academy life cycle uh, already embed a uh, metadata as the task. Yeah? Okay, uh, so this is example, uh, okay, in the uh, web archiving life cycles, uh, the metadata that need to be captured, even um, our student 
using uh, initially they are using HTTRAC2. Uh, so they need to look at the um, HTTRAC log status uh, in order to uh, uh, take all these value. Uh, then from this uh, field or uh, from this uh, detail, from the log detail, they need to uh, try to embed or try to map with the existing metadata in another uh, topics. Yeah? So they will uh, go stages by stages lah in the what, archiving life cycles. Uh, after that, at the end of the course, they're going to try to create a web archive repository. I, either they are using um, web static web or they are need to use the database as a repository. So this is just examples uh, how they try to uh, capture the web archive using uh, thematic or topical theme. Yeah? This is another example. Uh, so at least they, uh, our student can um, view or can uh, visualize how the uh, web archive content uh, can be accessible from the uh, web archive repository uh, database. Yeah. Um, actually, we come to the um, end of a um, slide. Uh, it's about the, uh, this is the last topic, I guess, uh, web archive challenges and features metadata creation uh, of course whatever uh, when we all talk about a web archive uh, the challenge the most challenge of course in terms of budget budget in order to maintain all these things security devices server and storage and also good team and technical expert okay. in the security devices um nowadays uh uh, no doubt we cannot uh, neg negligence about the ICT security. We need to uh, have a renewal basis. We need to have a strong firewall and policy and we need to identify the white list or black list of the um, in terms of security. Uh, server and storage also, uh, this is the challenges that we need to uh, cater uh, in terms of the corruptness uh, in terms of the server crash, uh, bugs, or how to index to have a good performance, uh, and also other related with the software and database management system with the server. Good team and technical expert. Yeah? Uh, one, uh, of course, the technical expert um, in terms of uh, web archivists and metadata expert in Malaysia or uh, go down into our faculty uh, information management also, we um, are at a middle level in terms of um, web archiving uh, environment and also metadata expert. Um, we, normally, we are applying the same metadata standard or the same uh, objects need to be uh, archived. Yeah? Um, and our technical expert, either in, at the government level or, or in the uh, university, we always um, have one guy, one IT guy with uh, many roles. Uh, so there is um, uh, quite hard or challenged by, the, by, the, by that uh, technical team in order to cater all job scope. Yeah? Uh, this is um, that's why we need to have a dedicated um, what archivist, dedicated um, technical expert uh, if you want to go further or beyond on the uh, web archive, uh, web archiving implementation in the future. Okay, as a conclusion, um, in terms of uh, education, especially because we are uh, more on uh, education part, ed education team, uh, I, uh, application of metadata as science as data science foundation 
is uh, uh, cannot be tolerated or we need to um, improve more in terms of uh, metadata fields that we need to uh, counterfeit. And ontology adoption in metadata modeling also uh, can accelerate data description for web archiving. Uh, could be, is, um, be our challenge or become of our uh, new tip topic to explore and to get some new students uh, in order to explore more on these uh, uh, fields. I guess um, that's all for me. I also have a look at the time actually. And on the, <laughs> can I stop the presentation? Okay, so um, any other questions, comments, suggestion uh, for uh, Professor Farhar's uh, wonderful presentation? All right, then. Um, any questions to any um, speakers? We have a you know wonderful um, three um, study has been presented. So, do you have any questions to uh, either Dr. Choi, Ms. Swanee, or Professor uh, Parr? Uh, any questions to any speaker are welcomed. Well, this was a very challenging time zone. We are zone B uh, in US, San Francisco midnight, New York 3 a.m. and uh, Europe and it's 9 a.m. I think that's favorite time in, in Asia is a uh, three o'clock or four o'clock. Uh, I'm in Seoul and it's a 4 p.m. But I think we had a uh, very productive, very informative, uh, you know, one and a half hour, um, you know, uh, through the three wonderful um, speakers and with their study. And thank you so much for all the wonderful presentation and speakers. And um, most of all, thank you so much for audience to uh, your attentions and great questions. And thank you again. And this is our uh, TCMI 2021 uh, best practice number one. Thank you so much. <laughs>